Father, we we uh, graciously come before your throne and we pray and, and thanks for all that there is. We thank you, Lord, that your holy Sabbath is, is about to come on us. And we we pray that that day is very precious to us. We, we just know that we want to rest in that day with you, Lord. And we thank you for our lives. And we thank you that you blessed and have mercy upon us all. We, we ask you, Lord, that you will that you that the Holy Spirit will really impress on us today on this chapter that we're reading and that uh, we will understand all that there is here for us. And we ask for blessings upon us all and we pray in the name of Jesus and in his power. Amen. 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 All right, guys, so we're in chapter three today, chapter three of Ruth. There's just 18 verses. So um, who is going to start out reading for us? I will. Okay. Then Naomi, her mother, chapter three. Chapter Ruth three. Redemption assured. Then Naomi, her mother in law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? Now, Boaz, whose young, whose young women you were with, is not our relative. In fact, he is, we know. We know in barley tonight at the, the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what to do, what you should do. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. And after Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was cheerful, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly, uncovered his feet and lay down. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself and there a woman was lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? So she answered, I am Ruth, your maid servant. Take your maid servant under your wing, for you are a close relative. Then he said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, in that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. Stay this night, and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you, good. Let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you. As the Lord lives, lie down until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, and she arose before one could recognize another. Then she said, do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Also, he said, bring the shawl that is on you and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six ephahs of barley, and laid it on her. Then she went into the city. When she came to her mother-in-law, she said, is that you, my daughter? 
Then she told her that the man had done what the man had done to her. And she said, these six epas of barley he gave me, for he said to me, do not go empty handed to your mother-in-law. When she said, sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter, to, matter this day. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. So um, a lot going on here. Um, starting out with verse one. Mm -hmm. So basically, what, what, what did you get from verse one? Naomi instructing her daughter-in-law how to seek security well for them, which means okay. uh, uh, which means basically it, it's security, but it's that security, so it's like living. Right. So basically, what she was doing was she was um, she was um telling her how to go about um, invoking the Leverite, the Leverite marriage um, proposal. Because, mm. right, remember, we, we talked, we, he, she, we, last week, we realized, we come across the fact that Boaz was a close relative, right? right? And we talked a little bit about uh, the kinsman, redeemer, and how um, it was the responsibility of the closest relative to, if possible, if able to, if inclined to do so, to um, be the, the redeemer or the savior or the one who would um, bring the one in slavery or poverty out of that, for whatever reason. And in this case, we know that basically Naomi lost everything when she lost her husband, when she lost her two sons, right? right. Um, the, the land um, that um, belonged to the, her family was in, in um, needed, was basically sold to pay off debts. And so um, Naomi, uh, um, Ruth, really Ruth and Naomi both, um, they were both in the same position, needed the services of the kinsman redeemer. And so here in verse one of chapter three, we see Naomi saying, um, um, because again, in verse two, it kind of carries on and carries over into the verse two, right? Now, Naomi, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he's winnowing, winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. And then she goes into the explanation. This is what you're going to do to invoke this, 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 um, cultural practice, right? Um, in verse four, it says, then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and cover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. So it is kind of a strange, strange things to, to strange practice to us, right? All right. But I guess it like, was a- Go ahead, Go ahead, Mike. I just wondered, did she like take off his shoes and then she lay down and feet, keep his feet warm while he was sleeping? Kind of like. That, no. No. Basically what she did was he had himself covered, right? So it's like you mm -hmm. laying down on the floor and covering yourself with a blanket. And basically she just laid a, like, like the letter T. So he's laying straight down. She's laying across. So she would be the cross part of the T. Right, okay. she slid at his feet. She uncovered his, he took the cover and pulled it over herself. So, oh, I guess, well now I see. So, I guess what that what that is implying is that, as because in 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 verse nine, she said, he said, "Who are you?" And she answered, "said I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative." So it's kind of like saying. Um, the, the act of covering herself with his blanket is kind of like him providing protection, security. Right. For her. Mm -hmm. 
and that in that in its in its sense in a sense that that what she did her action was the marriage proposal she was proposing um proposing marriage to him mm -hmm. she was saying you are a close relative it is your um uh, right and responsibility to act as kinsmen to 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 us to her really, to her mm -hmm. really to her it because it was her um it's like he was um because what it said was the closest relative would step in. So if, if um, I don't know which one of the brothers she was married to, but if if there was another brother, that brother would would have married Ruth. Would have by law had to marry Ruth. But there was no more brother. But there was no more brothers, and there was no right. So Close again, relative. The closest, the next closest relative would step in. Right. Right. So she was trying to show him that that she was willing to do this and that she would want him to to help her. Right. Yes. Got it. Yes, and kind of um, you kind of get a, a a fuller sense of it in verse ten, because she's basically not looking for just anyone. She's looking. She's she's walking in the steps of the the law, the cultural practice back then, which means that she was behaving honorably right because it was her right to do so and i i think um just in my mind by laying at his feet um and not laying by his side you know because she could have laid away from him by his side but she laid at his feet it's, it, it showed some type of a humility and when he asked she did use the word maid servant so right. yes, so I'm at your feet, I'm your maid. And then he said to her, I think what verse said something like he said, um, did he tell her to come by his side or his no. wings? No, she said, she said, take your maidservant under your wing for you are a close relative, verse nine. Right, exactly, right, right, right. And then in verse 11, he said, I will do for, for you all that you request for all the people of the town know that you're a virtuous woman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll come back to that thought. But what I wanted to, um, another thought that I wanted to bring out was um, Ruth's um, um, willingness to obey, willingness to obey everything that Naomi told her to do, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, First and foremost, let's re let's remind ourselves that M that Ruth is a Moabite. Right. She has no no inclination, no understanding, no acquaintance with with the cultural practice of of Israel. Right. So so Naomi has to explain everything to her. Right. Mm -hmm. So you are a stranger in a strange land, being told of a strange custom. Or practice mm -hmm. and then she said in verse five all that you say i will do to me yeah. that shows that she was very courageous mm -hmm. very brave she and she trusted willing, willing to, yeah she trusted naomi she trusted her mother-in-law mm -hmm. um she was willing to do what everything she told her to do right and it goes on in verse six where it said so she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. Um, so she followed her instructions to the T, mm -hmm. right? And then in verse seven, it talked a little bit. So remember when we were first, when back in chapter one, we discovered that the primary reason why um, Elimelech and left and his family left Judah was because there was a famine in the land, right? Right. And so the, the one of the so so this really I'm wondering if this is really the first harvest season where there the Lord had turned 
overturned overturn their um, the famine and, and blessed the people. Because it says in verse 7, after Boaz had eaten and drunk, his heart was cheerful. He went to lie down at the end of a heap of grain, um, which is demonstrating God's blessing to me. Um, I didn't know if anybody else picked up on that. Because they, this is there was no longer a famine in the land. God had, had blessed the people, right, Naomi? Yes, Naomi, yes, yes. I, I I realized. Well, when she was um, Naomi was going to return home, she did make a comment that the Lord had blessed yes. the land, and yes. that was her reason for returning home. Because Chapter now there was food, food and plenty yes. of food. Because she said the Lord had blessed the land. Yeah. See, in verse chapter one, verse six, she said. Um, for she had heard in the yes. country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Right, yes. right, right. So, so we see, of course, the implication is already previous to this because we see them harvesting the grain, right? In chapter two, they're harvesting the grain. Um, and there's enough there for people to glean, um, to glean because, I mean, that's what Ruth is doing. She's gleaning. Um, of what's left um, so there's sufficient there to for yes. provisions there to share with those who need and then here in verse 7 it's carrying through where it's talking about him laying down at the end of a heap of grain And in the SDA Bible commentary, it says this um, as it re relates to, to chapter, to, I'm sorry, to verse seven. It says, Boaz, um, with a plentiful harvest at hand, following the years of famine, Boaz could well be thankful for the bounties of heaven. So that was, um, that kind of feeds into the, the, the idea or the, 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 um, the, where it says that his heart was cheerful. He was reflect, reflecting on God's blessing and, um, and the demonstration of his blessing is this bountiful harvest that they're having um, at the end of this um, um, growing season. Anyone else with a thought? So, so one of the, the, the reason, um, so the other reason is, um, uh, the other thing that we, we should reflect on um, as it relates to the harvest is that, so we see them, they, were, they, they, they harvest the, the grain, right? They harvest the grain out of the fields. They bring it to the threshing floor where they thresh they thresh the, um, the cuttings, right? So they're separating the grain from the, the stalk. And then once they separate the grain from the stalk, the next thing that they do is they, um, they have to winnow the grain. And it is, um, I read somewhere where it said that winnowing was generally done in the, the cool of the day, which is in the, 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 the evening part of the day. So that's, um, and then the other thing is the fact that they're, the, each day that they harvest the grain and, and um, they harvest and thresh the grain, the pile of grain grows bigger and bigger each day. So that it piles up and um, they had to have someone there each evening to watch over the grain so that to prevent it from being, from being um, stolen. So that's one of the reasons, primary reasons why we see Boaz here. Um, he, it was, he was watching this guarding the grain. That's why he was down there on the threshing floor. It says here, um, it says here in, in a Palestinian harvest, the process of separating the grain from the straw was generally carried out at the threshing at a threshing floor 
under the open sky. This was usually a large, hard, flat, circular area of ground 40 to or 50 feet in diameter. Either the whole sheaves or the ears cut from the sheaves were spread upon the earthen floor and oxen were driven about the floor to trample out the kernels. Sometimes a sled weighted with stones was pulled by the oxen as they circled the floor. After winnowing, the grain was generally passed through a sieve to free it from grit and dirt. Then it was stored ready for grinding. So, um, so when he, when um, Naomi made reference to the fact that in verse two, he said, she said, now Boaz, whose young men, women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. So winnowing is the act of throwing the grain up to separate the grain from the from whatever trash um, was mixed into it. So the grain, when you throw up the grain, the grain would fall back down under its own weight, and then the wind would take away the trash. Mm -hmm. Mama used to do it. Throw it up like this. Yeah. And oh, just so like someone has experience with that. Ah? Huh? Did I hear I someone? Did I hear yes, someone I, testifying to that? Yes, I remember. I, I forgot that I was muted. <laughs> I have my friend Joyce here with me. But um, yes, I remember back in the days when um, I think they would put it in a little, um, a little, a little pan or a basket, and she would. My mom would throw it up in the air and catch it back in. So she would just keep throwing it, throwing it. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. just like you said, the, the wind would take away the, 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 trash. the trash, but the corn would fall back into it. And they keep doing that and until most of the trash would just blow away and then the nice corn would be left there. It's just when, when, I, when I reap my, my pea from my garden and I'm washing it, um, when you put the pea in the water, the pea will sink and the, the ones that are, or if there's a little piece of trash or, or yes, anything, we'll float to the those top. will float yeah. to the top, you know, and then you just um, throw that off. So it's the same type of a thing. You same know, idea, yeah. So yeah, yeah, so there's different ways that it was yeah. done, but that's based generally the, the idea is to separate the grain I mean the, the trash from the grain. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyone else with a thought before we move on? No, I'm the only country girl. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay. So so Ruth makes the the proposal, right? And um, Boaz accepts accepts the, well he accepts the the role of kinsman redeemer but of course there's a little hiccup right mm -hmm. we find out in verse 12 that he isn't the closest relative no but he, he, he was he was gracious enough to explain it to her and let yes. her know you know um i am willing to do as you request but he knew that there was another man that was closer in relative and he said i have to pass on the honor to that person if he declined then i can move forward but if he didn't decline then you would be his right yes so the reality is the reality is that either way ruth, ruth would have had somebody have, yes ruth would have been taken care of Maybe yeah. the other guy wasn't so rich. Regardless, she would have had a roof over her head. She wouldn't have to worry about money. Um, so apparently, apparently he was impressed by the way, by her, um, her, her proposal, right? Yeah. Because that's what she's talking, he's talking about when he references it in verse 20. Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end and at the beginning in that you did not go up to young men whether poor or rich 
And now my daughter, she he continues, do not fear. I will do for you all you request. For all the people know, all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. So, so really the primary thing about Ruth that impressed Boaz was that she was a virtuous woman. Yes. Um, it says here, um, in verse in the in the commentary it says um though a widow and a foreigner who had resided in bethlehem but a few weeks ruth was known was already known and respected by all so the reality is that she was being watched pretty closely by them folks Mm -hmm. And again, of course, you know, she's a stranger. She's, she's a stranger. Um, she's a Moabitess. She's not an Israelite. Um, so not only was she a stranger to the town, she was also a stranger to the, to the people and to the culture, right? right. But it says here, um, so she was respected by all. It would seem that Elimelech had been an influential and respected citizen of Bethlehem and that the town folks naturally interested themselves in the affairs and fortunes of his family. And we get, a, we, we get kind of an insight in that um, when, remember how they responded to, to them when they came back, when Naomi came back to town uh -huh. in chapter one, where it talks about um, in verse, Verse 19 of chapter one, it says, now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem and it happened when they had came, um, come to Bethlehem, all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? So immediately um, them coming back to town, everybody's taking an interest, right? But specifically looking at Ruth, it said, um, furthermore, the arrival of a foreigner would attract attention and everybody would observe her carefully during those first few weeks. Ruth had stood the test. She was recognized as a virtuous woman. In mentioning this fact, Boaz expresses still more emphatically his own high regard for Ruth. So... Boaz was attracted to her character, right? Yes. Attracted to her character. Um, in fact, if we go back to verse, chapter two, we can see um, it, says, it says here, um, well, actually starting in verse 10, she, so she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me? since I am a foreigner, or another way to say that is since I'm a stranger. And in verse 11, Boaz says, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. And then of course he pronounces a blessing on her, right? Yeah. The Lord repay your work, a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. And so um, here we see that not only did he pronounce the blessing, but God is going to use him as the, the, um, the channel through which the blessing will come to her. Right? Yep. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out, because um, we talked about the fact that um, what, what Ruth did was pretty brave, I thought it took courage for her to, to do what she did, um, because the reality is that Boaz could have rejected her, right? Well, yes. could have rejected the proposal. And the other thing is that um, the other aspect of this to look at, um, the fact that the town had 
um, grown to respect her and to see her as a virtuous woman. I mean, if somebody had seen her coming to the threshing floor to, um, to a man late at night, um, that would have caused some kind of a um, talk, right? Mm -hmm. So in fact, Ruth was taking a, a risk. Um, this thought is taken from the adult Sabbath school um, lesson study of 2007. Um, when it was the, the title of it, the title, the theme that that year was for better or for that quarter in 2007 was for better, for better or for worse. And it actually um, talked a little bit about Ruth. But anyway, in regards to the proposal, it said this, though it was in the darkness of the night, the proposal had the potential to be very embarrassing for Ruth. She could have been, she could have been spied by someone and stories might have spread. Uh, Boaz might have refused her request, but Boaz immediately showed his thoughtfulness by trying to put her at ease. He acted as though she was doing him a favor by choosing him instead of some younger man. He then promised to do all that she asked. Finally, he sent her back to Naomi laden with food. And he also went out of his way to protect her from any false accusations that might have come from her visit to him. And we can and that kind of points to verses um, verses 13, 14, 13 and 14. Where it says, he tells her, Tarry this night, it shall be in the it shall be in the morning that I if, um, if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman as well, let him be, be do, do the kinsman part. So she has revealed to her that yes, he would do for her all that she asked. In fact, he was not the closest relative, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 12 actually showed that. Now it is true that I am a near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. But he says, Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth. Lie down until morning. And she lay at his feet until morning, and she rose up before one could know another. So basically, she rose up early, or very early, when... Um, it was still fairly dark. Um, for the very reason of, of um, I mean, he says it, let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Um, and then he gives her six measures of barley to take home with her. Because he, he said... Um, He says this in verse 17, these six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. In fact, what, what the fact that he gave, he, Boaz gave Ruth these six measures of barley was actually, he was sending a message to Naomi. Did anybody pick up on that? Sending a message to Naomi. He was sending a message to Naomi through the act of giving or sending Ruth back with these six measures of barley. Because remember, Naomi was the one that initiated this, right? Naomi was the one that initiated this because um, through Ruth, um, because again, Ruth didn't know anything about this custom. So he is acknowledging the fact that um, he recognized that Naomi's, Naomi had a hand in all of this. So he was actually extending the very, um, the very protection that he was um, extending to Ruth 
he was also extending it to Naomi. In in my let's see. It says here, um, uh, with regards in verse, talking to verse 15, talking about these six measures of barley, it says this would approximately be one and a quarter bushel of barley. Ruth bound it this tightly in her mantle or veil and no doubt carried it on her head or possibly on her shoulder. It was probably about as much of a load as she could conveniently carry over the hilly path that's the other thing that we didn't uh, kind of discuss. The, the fact that um, Bethlehem was actually built high up on, on a mountain. Um, and in fact, the, 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 the threshing floor and the fields were, so she had to go down, down to the threshing floor. So she was really going down. So when her return to, to her home or to, to where they lived, she was now going uphill, right? So it says here she, it was probably about as much of a load as she could conveniently carry over the hilly path into the city. Um, in verse 17, it's, so it talks about the fact that, um, that he did not want um, Ruth to go back empty handed to her mother-in-law. So she said, that it says this, Boaz knew well that Ruth's visit had been suggested by Naomi and his gifts of six measures of barley was intended as a tacit recognition of that fact. It bespoke an acknowledgement of Naomi's interest in the matter and implied that his personal interest in Ruth would not lead him to forget Naomi. So again, you know, we talk, of the, the, talk about the fact that um, the name of God is not mentioned really much throughout the book of, 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 um, of Ruth. But we talked also again about the reality that his presence is real in the book, right? From start to finish. And here again, we see the fact that he is blessing these two women, Ruth for her faithfulness. And Naomi, of course, is a recipient of that blessing um, through Ruth. Um, but it's coming from, coming from God through Boaz, through Ruth to her. So in the end, um, they both end up being blessed um, of God. Anyone has a thought um, relating to that? Oh, it all sounds pretty clear. So again, again, the theme, the theme of loyalty and devotion, the theme of love and um, faithfulness, the theme of um, generosity and kindness um, is, you know, coming through throughout the throughout these chapters from start to, you know, well, we'll see to finish right now we're in the midst of it, but, um, you know, both, both Ruth and Boaz in their own right, in their own sphere, um, come across as being honorable, dependable, um, kind, generous, um, giving of themselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they basically demonstrate um, God, godly um, characteristics and it speaks to how we should be um, also, if we are represent, represent, if we represent God, we are, call oh, ourselves. Oh, but you know what? When I stand up, you stand up, you see it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Choo -choo. Oh <laughs> you know, when you sit down. Uh -huh. Oh, Hello. what's going on here? Sorry, sorry, Veronica. We <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were sharing a thought. Uh, no, 
like, I'm so sorry because um, the pictures were blurred and we hear chatting away and no. <laughs> so again, it's the it's this um the uh, the theme is consistent throughout the book, where we see that um, again as we stated, Boaz and Ruth both demonstrate um god godly characters, a uh, godly characteristics I should say, um of loyalty, devotion, kindness, humility, meekness, on the path of our uh, Ruth. Um, seeking to do everything as her mother-in-law instructed her, directing her, and her responding, all that you say I will do, kind of puts us as my, in mind of the way um, of Christ when he was on earth, that he did all that the Father um, told him. In, uh, and he said, he said it to us, if you, you come after me, anyone who come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. So it's this idea of self-denial, um, um, uh, um, and giving of self, um, looking outward as, as opposed to looking inward, um, sharing, caring, demonstrating the characteristics of Christ to those around us. And Andrew, remember in, in um, Jesus's early ministry, when his mother um, at the, the wedding and yes. that was the way she instructed the disciples. She said, whatever he says to unto you, do it. You know, so right. it's a, um, it's another story of just um, doing what you're told to do, even without questioning and then see what, um, and trusting and allowing the end result to just come about. To work itself out. Yes. To work yeah, itself that's out. The reality. Yes. Basically, that is the reality of Ruth's, um, Ruth's response, right? She didn't yeah. question her. She didn't say, why do this? Or why do I have to do that? Or why do I have to do it this way or that way? She didn't invoke any of her own cultural practices. She basically said, all that you say, all that you say is done to me, I will do. So she was obedient. Um, she was, she demonstrate, demonstrated obedience to the instructions as it was provided to her um, by her mother-in-law. And again, it goes back to the fact that she was devoted to her, she loved her, um, and she would have done anything for her, right? Takes us back to that response that she gave back in, in chapter one, um, in verse 18, um, in verse um, 16 of chapter one. I love that verse. Mm -hmm. Anyone else with a thought? The only thing that comes to mind for me is, is that uh, uh, in scripture it says we are to be sober minded and to reason with the Lord and think of, think on what he wants us to do and this kind of reflects that. Living in obedience to his will. Amen. Amen. Walking the straight and narrow. Um, so basically at this point they have done everything that they possibly could do, right? Mm-hmm. There's really nothing else. It was basically out, out of their hands now. Um, I mean, that's what Naomi said, right? Mm -hmm. Wait. Um, in in Wait. verse 18. Go ahead. Wait and see. Yes. Then she says, Be, sit still, my daughter, until you know, thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. So um, Naomi knew that Boaz wasn't going to rest until the matter was settled, right? He's going to seek that other family member, find out if he's interested, because he would need to buy back the field. He would need, well, purchasing the field, not, not just, he's not, so Boaz was, 
not just talking about the physical redemption of the, the property, he was also talking about the welfare of those who um, of are involved. Ruth and right. Naomi. Ruth and Naomi. Yeah, Ruth so and Naomi. In, so in purchasing, in purchasing the, the property back, he would be inheriting, inheriting the well-being and the welfare of Naomi and Ruth. Yeah, that would so be the first, the first um that would be the, the step the outward you want to show the, the, the community would see that and then yes. the, the rest would be um in, in, in you know in my in now little, huh? there's, a, there's a little thing in my bible for chapter three that says boaz is urged to serve as the lord's protective wing over Ruth and Naomi. Right. So uh -huh. if he goes through with it, that's what he's, he'll be doing. Right. So yeah, so Ruth has done all she could. The kinsman yeah. Boaz must take the make the legal arrangements for their marriage. Uh -huh. The law was not, was not so much concerned with the personal desires of the woman, because again, remember, this is a male-dominated society, right? Uh -huh. um, the women, women didn't have any um, rights, so to speak. So it says here, um, the law was not so much concerned with the personal desires of the woman, it would seem as with those of the near kinsman. All he needed to do was to establish his rights to the satisfaction of the jury of the citizens that he would be able to gather at the city gates. To wait patiently for, the, for an important issue to be resolved is never easy. So again, it's that um, idea of you know, being patient or you know, um, waiting to see the outcome. Um, again, it says waiting is not always an easy thing to do, particularly when there is nothing a person can do to influence the decision except to pray about it. So again, yeah, we say that there was nothing more she could do, but the reality is that, yeah, they could um, pray for divine intervention, right? And I think Naomi was earnestly doing that. I would say think so too, yes. And, yes. and you know, the Bible doesn't state how long the waiting period is. It could be a while. Yes, it could have been taken a while. Yeah, we we just don't know that One. that that period. Yeah, so um the reality is that regardless of the the period of time, I think the thrust, the thrust of the um, the thrust in 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 the book of Ruth is that uh, the sovereignty of God, the fact that in spite of your circumstances, God will always provide. Um, he will always, you know, it says in in Psalm, He opens His hand and satisfies the desire of every living being, every living thing. So, I mean, he, he sits on the throne. He is very well acquainted with us. There is nowhere that we can go that we are out of his presence. Psalm 139 talks about that in, intimately. Um, Whither shall I flee from thy spirit? You know, um, so we are always in his, in his mind. We are never not out of his mind. Um, Psalm 121 talks about, I will lift mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. And definitely these two women were in need of, of help. Um, the idea that, so again, it goes, you know, to the, the idea that um, God is sovereign and that he will take care of his own. And these, these two ladies had demonstrated, um, Ruth demonstrated, I mean, look at the sacrifice she made. I'm um, again, leaving her her familiar environment, leaving her, her everything that she knew um, to go to uh, a place and to accept not just the people, but also to accept God um, as her God. And so again, we see God honoring that faithfulness um, in her 
and 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 also Naomi's faithfulness, not casting him off. Even though she came back um, a little sad, um, she still um, the reality of God was still with her, right? Mm -hmm. So again, um, God is honoring them for her, their faithfulness, for their loyalty, for their devotion, for not giving up, for not giving in, for not casting casting away their confidence. Um, and as a result, they were blessed, truly blessed, blessed beyond measure, blessed beyond. I mean, I don't think Ruth ever dreamed that things would turn out the way they're going to turn out for her. I mean, they were pretty much basically in survival mode. Mm -hmm. But, but God, every step of the way, God, I mean, from the fact, from the time they left Moab, um, I mean, you're talking about um, two women traveling alone at this time, during the time of the judges, um, think about that, and nothing happened to them, and uh, I don't know, it, it was a few hundred miles journey, so of course, not only, um, we don't know how much food, where they took shelter, but the reality is that God was with them every step of the way, watching over them, taking care of them every step of the way. Um, put in mind the promise in Isaiah where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Um, and even though he never take, he never, doesn't always remove our circumstances, he's right there in the crucible with us, right? Whatever we're going through, whether it be the valley of the shadow of death or whatever our circumstances are, God is right there beside us every step of the way, supplying our need according to his riches and glory. Um, not necessarily taking care of the need for tomorrow, but taking care of the need for today, right? Because in Matthew, he talks about take no thought for tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. We live in the here and now, in the, in the here and now. So he blesses us in the here and now. Um, and again, that goes to the idea of walking by faith and not by sight, um, trusting him, you know, leaning not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him. And um, he promises to direct our steps. He will never leave us, but we can leave him. That is very true. That one thing he will not interfere with is our choice. Did anyone else have a um, thought to share? They'd like to share with us, with the group? For closing prayers, we have a prayer for uh, uh, Yesenia and her, and her family. Keep her in mind and her family. Yeah. Did something happen? Her dad passed away. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Anyone else? With also, a... the previous week, her grandmother passed away. The previous month, pardon me, her grandmother also had passed away. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. Yes, I knew that. Okay, so we're going to keep them in prayer. Anyone else? Not, I think that um, we can go ahead and um, bring this study to a close. Um, I will go ahead and, and do a uh, closing prayer. Father in heaven, we are so thankful and grateful that you have seen fit to allow us to be here this evening on this another of your holy Sabbath days. Um, we give thanks and praise for all that transpired throughout this past week. All our circumstances, you saw us through them in spite of ourselves and you brought us through. And um, here we are again on this Holy Sabbath day. We are giving, giving you thanks and praise. Bless each and every person that's represented here on um, online. 
Um, we're thankful that we have this opportunity to come together to share and to hear the words of life. And um, we pray that you'll continue to bless each and every person, that you will help us to um, be mindful of the things that are shared here, um, apply them to our lives wherever they're applicable with the view to everlasting life. And we ask you at this time um, to um, those silent prayers, those unexpressed um, petitions or desires or wants or needs that um, you know our hearts, you know our minds. And sometimes we find it difficult to, to express ourselves the way we want to. So we're so thankful and grateful for the Holy Spirit who um, takes and presents our prayers um, according to your perfect will. We ask you to be with the Ramirez family, Yesenia and her family as they go through another um, loss um, of a family member and that you'll be, be a source of strength and comfort to them, that they will be encouraged to hold fast and to, to look up and to keep their eyes focused on the who is able to see them through um, this moment of grief and pain. And so Lord God, we give you thanks and praise again Thank you for all that you've done, for all that you will do, and that all that you will continue to do for us um, according to your perfect will. Again, we ask you to keep us on the path of righteousness, keep us walking the straight and narrow path with a view to everlasting life, with a view to, um, look, um, to your soon return in the clouds of glory. This we pray and ask and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All right, guys, thank you so much for coming on and um, hopefully 